Is it hard to access affordable, healthy food? Then listen carefully. Daryl Addison, an African-American inventor, has patented a process for growing food on demand. He called it Torpedo Pot. Torpedo Pot is a fully automated flower pot that gives you control over your plant's environment. All you do is add soil, seeds, and plants to the flower pot and watch it grow. Yes, Torpedo Pot grows the rest. Visit www.torpedopot.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, thank y'all for joining us on the stream tonight. We welcome you on this fine Tuesday. Um, time is ticking. What is it? The, the 9th of, of April, ladies and gentlemen. The mid-month is almost upon us. I mean, have y'all noticed how quick these months are passing? It is crazy. It is so crazy. So, you know, shout out to all of y'all. Um, we're waiting for people to come in. We shared to, you know, make sure you share. Um, uh, definitely share. And also, while we're waiting for people, make sure, well, wrong one, right one. Make sure you download the African Diaspora News Channel app in the Google Play and Apple App Store. We are, you know, slowly growing. Um, you know, definitely there. We're trying to hit our goal. Our ultimate goal is 10,000 members. That's all we need to be completely, you know, free of, of, of everything that, that we need to be free of with these social media platforms. Um, everyone that was on Patreon, for instance, uh, I, I told you that, and I made a video, that we need you to move over to the app. You know, once everybody move over to the app, cancel your Patreon and everything. Then from there, we are, you know, we won't use the Patreon no more because we need to have our app. You know, Patreon is their platform. Um, you know, and, and you still got to watch what you say on play, Patreon as well. So we just want to have everybody on the app, and that's the best place for everyone to be. All right. So before we get into the meat of what we're talking about, you know, tonight, and we're surely going to get into the super mayor, right? Um, a lot of little developments with her. You know, you know, I think she's she's a character. Super Mayor is a, is a character. But, you know, I wanted to address something real quick. Um, there was a video posted earlier today. And, um, and, and Lisa, the app is going to be updated. Uh, we got some, we're going to have a meeting next week about some of that. So we got a lot of things coming down the pipe. A lot, a lot of improvements coming down the pipe. So just... Hang tight. Um, there was a video, I think, of, uh, I think Renell Way actually made a video about uh, Julius Malema, and he had made uh, a speech about having more babies in South Africa. From what I was told, he was in the Eastern Cape. In the Eastern Cape, there's a lot of poverty um, over there. Now, what a lot of Americans don't understand about certain areas of poverty in the African continent what you call poor, oh, we poor, we struggling, we poor. You're not poor. You're, you're poor and you walk around with an iPhone. You're poor, but you walk, you're buying Jordans. You're poor, but you're still eating in the restaurant. But you're poor. No. Poor over there is not, listen, I haven't seen not a single black American living in a shanty. I haven't seen a single black American shanty town. So a lot of times when you hear a certain conversation, you, you view it through American lenses, and and less and the only reason I can talk about it because I've been there and I kind of seen some of the, the poverty in different countries. So I love Brother Julius, love him. I, when he them them white supremacists are scared of him. I love that. Um, when something go down, they call EFF. I'm with that. But I, I, I made sure to view the video before I say this. Like I said, okay, let me look at the video. Let me see what Brother Brother Malema said. And he was talking about having babies. This is the problem. And I even listen to what Renell Way said. I say, I can rock with that. And I'm going to tell you why. I agree with, with her commentary um, about the babies. And what she didn't explain, but she's going to do a follow-up video. The South African economy, if we're complaining here about the economy is bad, we don't want to have babies here in America, right? Our poor is considered a luxury than a lot of other countries. 
if we, a lot of, I ain't saying, I'm not saying me, but just saying as a whole, a lot of young people don't want to have kids. These freaking politicians that say in America have squandered the money, made it where young people can't buy a house, young people can't buy a car, young people can't get a job. They squandered the money. So do you really want to bring kids into that? Most people who's wise would say no, because I can barely feed myself. So why don't I bring a kid into that? Okay. That's America. Let's go to South Africa where people are really dealing with some poverty on top of that poverty. They're dealing with load shedding. Now one of y'all deal with your lights getting cut off every day in certain places, way more than others, three hours, six hours, 12 hours at a time. Then I was sharing about stage 16 load shedding. They, they floating around talking about 26 hours without power that affects your economy. Okay. You do not need to be bringing no babies into any kind of poverty or any kind of mess. I do not advocate poor people to just go have some babies. No, that's stupid. Are you going to take care of those babies? Are you going to give money to take care of those children? Most people, them politicians, I don't know, a couple people saying, well, in Korea and Europe, they're talking about have babies. Notice who's saying have the babies, politicians who squandered the money in all these countries, making it hard for people to live. Maybe if they wouldn't have squandered the money, stole money, et cetera, and fixed it where the people can afford a house, afford a car, for children, maybe people will be happy to have more children. But people with common sense would say, I'm not about to have kids if I can't afford them. It's not no revolutionary anything to be having a bunch of kids that we can't take care of. Look at our black community in America. Don't we get mad when we see people just having kids recklessly with no father in the household, leaving them with single mothers? Do, don't we get upset about that? Of course we do because we're putting those kids, those kids are in dire straits. They need a mother and a father in the household to take care of those children. That's not, that's nothing revolutionary about anything. What's revolutionary. If you're going to run a country is let me make sure my people good and provide jobs for all my people. Let me make sure the power stays on with the other people wasn't doing. That's what I'm about to do. I'm, I'm in load shedding. I'm going to make sure married couples are taken care of and they papered up. So now when we talk about having babies, they can comfortably have it because they got a house to stay, car to drive, schools, insurance. It's easy to take care of these kids. Like you don't, you don't get on no, 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 no silly talk and don't think about the financial aspect of it. And I'm speaking as an American looking into their situation because I've been there, right? Now, of course you got a place in South Africa. Where people got bag. Oh, they, man, they driving big. They driving uh, Bentley. They driving Rolls Royce. They doing all kinds of stuff in places, but they got places that people can't afford that. So I get what brother Malema was saying, but I just think he needs to word it a, a little better because we can't recklessly just have kids. Even in America, I would just get on this platform. Black people have some kids, just have kids. I'm like, wait a minute. No, you need to make sure you got a job. <laughs> you need to make sure you got to have a career. You need to make sure you have a business or something. Then in marriages, we have two parent household. Then we come in there and have children. You understand? So the people that was all like talking, saying things to, to that young sister, she, she was actually was right. I, I give her that. She was right. If she was wrong on something, I would have told her, but no, she, she's hundred percent right. As a father, I would never want to see a child being raised in poverty. And she told me some things that some single mothers are doing over there to get money. And I'm gonna let her tell, tell that herself, but I would never want a child to come into poverty. Then you, you need a mother and you need a father period. Not no single mothers, not no this, not and living off the government. We know don't even work. And a thousand rand when he talked about it's equivalent to $54. You cannot take care of a child in South Africa. With 54 dog on dollars. Sorry, you can't. I looked at the research. Renell Way got the research as well. She's gonna make a follow up video about the research, how much it actually takes to take care of a child in South Africa. But it's definitely not what Brother Julius was, was presenting. So, what I say to that is, I love Julius about racism, white supremacy. I love him talking about getting land back, but he needs to put some people around him to talk about taking care of children.
because that's that's just and listen, I got my areas of expertise too. Do you see me talking about financial anything? No, that's not my expertise. Do you see me talk about uh, how to be an architect? No, that's not my expertise. I stay in my lane, but I don't mind getting people around me to you know, either come on or advise me on what to do or what to say in the area of certain things. So it's nothing against Brother Malema. We love him. He just was kind of off the mark on some of that when it comes with the economy. And inflation hit South Africa too. Uh, they came out of COVID too. So that that's it. I mean, I get where he's going, but they the majority. I mean, I don't really see a baby issue like that for them. Um, you know, like even in black America, you know, if anybody should be talking about children, maybe us, but I still would want children unless we're going to bring marriages and two parent households. If we're not going to do that, then we need to hold off on that and not bring our children into poverty. No, I don't think we should. And that's just, that's just bottom line. Um, with that, and, and, and Donnie say some of the sisters should, should advise him. That's okay. Listen, his heart's in the right place. I get it. It's no indictment against brother Malema. What he's saying, his heart's in the right place. It's just the application of what he's saying. He's just, I don't think he really thinking it through, especially from what Renelle way told me in the Eastern Cape, you have a high teenage pregnancy. Um, and people really get turned up on what he say and want to go do what he say. Right. And so when you are a leader, you have to kind of think ahead a little bit Well, how people are going to respond to me, especially if I'm kind of polarizing like he is. Right. So that's all. It's, it's nothing against our brother. It, it's just, it's just, it's just, we have to think things through a little bit, you know, zeal sometimes get the best of us. And then later we're like, Oh shoot, man, maybe or whatever. So no, I agree with Renell way with that a hundred percent. I, I, I stand by that commentary. Um, I think some people's asking questions about her or, you know, the hiring of her, I hired her and I hired her for a lot of reasons actually. Um, and even the team looked at her way before we brought her on. And so y'all gonna have to get used to different people doing different things. Everybody's not me. Um, I don't live in South Africa. I live in America. So. I would prefer a perspective from the country than somebody like me looking from the outside in. Sure, I could visit, but I'm still I'm still a black American. I'm not them. And that's fine. I don't supposed to be. You know, that's why I kind of stay in my lane. Have you noticed that? I kind of try to report on things that I have more expertise in, try to bring people in from the continent. Eventually I'm gonna bring some people in from the Caribbean to talk about that. You see, it, it works out just fine over here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all gotta think a little bit. We can't recklessly just have babies and, and not have two parent household, two parents households, but you got to have a jobs, career, uh, affordability of household. You got to keep the lights on, <laughs> you know, to have some babies, right? So no, 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 we don't, we don't need to do that. And that's that. All right. All right. So with that being said, with that being said, with that being said, um, Let's get to the devotional real quick, and then we'll get to the story. So let's get to the devotional. Y'all forget I am the leader. They want to hear from the mayor, if y'all ain't learned that yet. The mayor, not the trustees that don't do nothing, that only run their mouth. Y'all don't do no work, no work. Mm. What is that? No comment. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all self. Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of yourself. So this is what it's all about, guys. They don't want a black person in power. They don't want a woman in power. You don't even, if you ain't seen that yet. And someone so young. Everybody gotta understand, God give you what you can handle. That's what God give you. He ain't gonna give you more than that. As long as you can stay, stay the course, fight the fight, and keep going, that's what we're going to do here at Thornton Township. And we've been doing a doggone good job. Clerk, what are you doing? You're out of order. you out of order. Did I call the road? Did I say call the road? I'm still speaking. You're out of order, Clerk Key. you out of order, Clerk Key. Like, stop. Y'all out of order. Everybody want to run stuff. Y'all don't run this house over here. Stop, please. All right. Shout out to the super mayor. And we, she will be the subject matter of today, actually. Um, so there's been some developments, ladies and gentlemen. Um, former Chicago mayor, Lori Lightfoot, somebody called her, you know, I've heard people call her Uncle Mammy. 
I've heard people call her, her chopper suit Lori. I've heard Uncle Lori. I've heard all kinds of names for, for Lori Lightfoot, but Lori Lightfoot, if you don't know, she was the former mayor of Chicago before Brandon Johnson. And at this step, maybe y'all probably should have kept Lori Lightfoot because Brandon Johnson is a lot worse than Lori Lightfoot was. I, I have to admit that, ladies and gentlemen. So Dalton wants to know what's up with the bag. Tiffany ran off with the bag. Tiffany is hiding uh, 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 receipts. She's not being accountable with the town's money. And, and everybody want to know what is the deal. So they decided to reach out to Lori Lightfoot. Now, Lori Lightfoot, she was an attorney. Lori Lightfoot actually was a former federal prosecutor. Okay. So when people talk about why they reach out to her, well, I mean, being a former federal prosecutor, attorney, former mayor, probably would be a person you would think maybe could look into it since she was a mayor of Chicago, which has a much bigger bag than Dalton have. And Lori Lightfoot was never accused of stealing money, missing money, or none of that. She wasn't ever accused of that. So let me go ahead and cue this up so y'all can see what happened with that. You'll hear from Lori Lightfoot herself. And let's just kind of talk about it a little bit uh, here. A special investigator to the village of Dalton at a rate of $400 per hour to investigate the following matters. One, the May 2023 Las Vegas trip, including all expenditures, all allegations of misconduct, and all internal investigations, if any, along with any village, state, and federal law violations. Two, the spending of ARPA funding without going out for bid and or failing to properly spend ARPA funds. Three, failure to provide a full accounting of all ARPA funds spent. Four, hiring contractors without going to bid or requesting the RFP. Five, six, five, hiring the contractors without the approval of the corporate authorities. Six, making payments to vendors without the approval of the corporate authorities. And seven, paying the village prosecutor Delgado Law Group over $900,000 over the last two and a half years. Um, so we're gonna do a motion and I'll make that motion. I'll ask for a second. We will go into discussion thereafter to further expand. So I'll make a motion if there's a second. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank, thank you uh, for that incredibly warm and welcome reception. Um, let me first acknowledge and thank the many residents of this fine village uh, who have extended themselves and given me strong words of encouragement. I can tell from this turnout, there's gotta be close to 200 people here, um, that people in this village want something different, wanna go in a different direction. And I want to assure you that it's for you that I am here. And that I will do my utmost um, if this motion uh, is passed to make sure that I serve you with integrity. I also want to acknowledge and thank um, the trustees who are here. Um, and thank you for um, your confidence in me to conduct a thorough and timely and independent investigation into the matters outlined in the motion regarding uh, Mayor Tiffany Henyard and her administration. <laughs> As someone who's made good governance the cornerstone of my public service career, I recognize maintaining the trust of those you serve and making decisions in their best interest is absolutely essential. The residents of Dalton deserve nothing less than a government that is fully accountable, responsive, transparent, and effective stewards of your precious tax dollars. As a lawyer and former federal prosecutor and mayor, I bring expertise in leading investigations of this kind and understand the complex challenges of government. 
I will commit to you that I will follow the facts where they lead without bias and reserve comments um, from this night forward until the work is complete. At the conclusion of this investigation, I will provide an assessment of the findings and the recommendations. And I welcome and urge the full cooperation by Mayor Henyard, her staff, all village trustees, vendors, and others who have information relevant to this inquiry. Thank you very much. Well, the people, you know, I wanted to make sure to play that part. The, it was all mostly black people there that was clapping and celebrating that, you know, Mayor Lightfoot is there to do an investigation. I saw some people say, well, why won't she hire, um, why don't they hire a forensic auditing firm? Uh, I'm pretty sure if she was a fighter or prosecutor, and I'm gonna kind of just go somewhere with this. I think she, she, being a part of this for a few reasons. Definitely some of it could be to get her back in the good graces of people. Because you remember when Mayor Lightfoot, you know, actually, you know, got voted out. She kind of got voted out tarred and feathered a little bit, kind of like an embarrassment. So what better way to get back in the good graces of a lot of people is expose the super mayor of what she's doing. So with her being tied in, you know, being a former federal prosecutor, Attorney, remember there's an FBI field office in Chicago. Remember that. So you know she gonna have information coming in, you know, to help her, assist her, probably from the FBI. That's a given since they're right there and she used to basically work with them all the time. Um, she was a mayor, as I said earlier. So I think this action, Tiffany, I think she has 60, yeah, she has 60 days to do her job. She's, uh, everybody talking about her getting paid $400 an hour. Okay, so what? They only paying her $30,000, but it turns up to $400 an hour. Well, if you're gonna hire a forensic auditing firm, you're gonna need some of that money to do so, which I pretty, if anybody would be smart, they would hire a forensic firm, because she's not, but that's what prosecutors do anyway, even when you look in, when federal prosecutors are going after people, they, they have all kinds of people looking into the money, looking into the finances, and see, this is the issue for Tiffany right here. Once they really start going, dig into it, you know, if she's committing wire fraud, that's that charge you really don't want. It's a wire fraud charge. And so Tiffany having went on social media, if y'all been paying attention to this, she went on social media kind of run off at the mile. You know, she real jazzy when people tell me they're investigating her, but I haven't seen her talk too much after this. Now I see people in here talking about there's a town hall right now. Okay, that's a town hall right now. I'll view it. If it's something for us to review, we'll come back tomorrow and talk about it. I don't like a bunch of dead space on a video. I mean, some things people say they're babbling. I don't want to bore you with that. I'd rather take the parts that it, it means something. But I think Tiffany needs to be uh, concerned about this one. Um, also, what happened on that Vegas trip with the SA, you know what I mean by SA? I think she needs to be concerned about that because I think that is even worse because you know, what the police officer said that the trustee allegedly done, and he showed him the girl sl sleeping on the bed and take it, pulling her clothes back and showing him this and showing him that. And she was, you know, she said she didn't consent. And that when she went to super mayor and told her what was going on, she was saying she would handle it. There's alleged she would handle it because this can't get out because this would ruin me and all the work I, I've done. That's not a good thing either, especially you being a woman, you going to allegedly now, you, you did this to a, another woman and then you, you end up basically retaliating on her and firing her, which we have so many laws against that, like retaliation against people being, you know, essayed or harassment or whatever the case may be. So, <sighs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiffany got a lot going on, you know, and I laugh at her and I, I think she's a character in a lot of ways. I think she's funny. And, and I, you know, I think maybe she should did a show or did a social media platform, but in the area of the people's money, you know, yeah, you can't, you can't be doing that sis. You can't. 
And when people are telling you, why are you let it get this far? And you could at least came clean on some things and, 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 and halfway try to fix it, but you didn't want to do that. You want to run around Dalton acting like, you know, you a freaking dictator from whatever country you want to call, right? You putting billboards up all over the place of yourself. Like they do in countries with dictators. You run around here with the police and you know, shaking people down, telling them to run up on people talking about, Hey, you know, you want to donate to my campaign? Like, nah, I'm cool. And then you start canceling business licenses. And you know what I'm saying? There's so many different things this woman has been doing while people be like, man, she, she got to move. But then every time they try it, I remember what the trustee said that she spent $900,000 with a, I think Delgado law firm. Well, you know, people have been trying to get rid of her. It's not like they, they haven't been trying. They've been trying to recall her and all of that. Case in point, let me, let me, let me put this up on the screen real quick. So you can see this, this woman, so, so narcissist, this, this is what she puts up right here. Recall null and void. I am and forever will be Dalton's mayor. No weapon that is formed against you will succeed. Boy, look, but the, the super mayor, is she a trip, isn't she? Isn't she a trip? I mean, this, this is what she, she put up after the recall effort, you know, failed to remove her. Why the people want to recall her? Because she's not doing right with the money. It's just bottom line. And, and ladies and gentlemen, this is a black majority, black American town. Okay. And they want her gone. They was happy to have her, but she messed that up. So I can't really feel bad for her or what's going on. But the deal is she's doing all this stuff in people's face. Like, bro, you put something up that like, okay, I am and forever will be Dalton's mayor. Really, Tiffany? Really? Like, God. Oh, Lord. This woman here. This woman here. Yeah, 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 yeah. T Tiffany, yeah, Kellen's right. Tiffany is like Trump in some ways. But I'm telling you, Tiffany would fit in real good in Nigeria. She needs to go be Nigeria's next president. she fit in real good over there. Uh, uh, all right, but 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 other things that 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 she like she a post. Give, give me give me a second. Let me show y'all something else this woman posted. Hey guys, it's Super Mayor Tiffany A. Henry, the People's Mayor. So I heard you guys was looking for me. If you looking for Tiffany Henry, subscribe button. Yes, you press the subscribe button. So what you want me to talk about? This or that? This and that? Or me? Tiffany A. Henry? You pick. Put your questions in the comments, and I'm going to answer all questions. Just be respectful. If you disrespectful, I'm not going to answer it. Because remember, the tea with the receipts. Matter of fact, if you want the tea, get it from me. <laughs> Go tell that. Lord Jesus, oh, this woman. This woman is talking about the repos because remember that she wasn't paying the bills, even though the uh, trustees approved the money to go pay the bills for the police cars. So when she mentioned the repos, the people was writing them say, Hey, we about to repo these police cars. Cause y'all not paying. Y'all got a $70,000 bill and y'all haven't paid it. So we're going to repo that. Okay. So that's why she's talking about the repos. You know about the Vegas situation. All that went down there. All this is a joke for her. This is a big joke. Like black people's money is a joke. It's funny. I'm going to create a podcast. I'm going to create a YouTube. This is funny. Hey, talk to me. I got the tea guys. Like holla at me. Like, like, th like this it, It's funny. Yes. On the service. It is funny. I ain't gonna lie. It's very funny. But when we get to reality, this isn't funny. And, and, and then the problem is she's literally walking. She's literally a stereotype now. That's what the part, this is the part that I don't like. She's a stereotype. And I don't like when we become a stereotype. I don't like it. It makes me, it bothers me because Tiffany Henyard, uh, uh, yeah, she embarrassing. Tiffany Henyard could have done real good for black people in Dalton. Well, what leaders don't understand, if you just do right by your people, they wouldn't care if you flew first class. I'm telling you, if you took care of all your residents, you make sure the schools are good. The roads are good. Man, the police treat everybody with respect. Hospitals are great. Business community is happy. Nobody would have cared if Tiffany stayed at the Four Seasons. 
Nobody would have cared if she flew first class. Nobody would have cared if she went to Chicago and, and got box seats to watch the bears or something. Nobody would have cared if she took care of her people. Like, I don't know why these leaders, um, what does this person say? Eric Gray say if we had a temporary revocable delegation of people like Tiffany Henyer, when they'll be able to show both like she does, eh, you know, you got people like that, but you got people enabling her too, though, Eric, that's what it is. They enabling her instead of saying, Tiffany, no, we're not going to support you. The police will ask you something in that town and say, no, Tiffany, we're not giving you no security detail. And you, she mentioned in that piece security, she's paying a million dollars security. You're not the president of the United freaking States. How is it you're paying a million for security, but Brandon Johnson isn't doing it. And he's a mayor of a major city right next door to you. Brandon Johnson are run around with Chicago police like that, but why is she doing it? That doesn't make sense. What, why are you so important? Somebody want to get at you, but they don't want to get at Brandon Johnson who is over Chicago. So she did. She went, got that Tahoe. That she, that she, I think on a lease, correct? Overpaid for a, a tricked out Tahoe or whatever she did over there. I mean, this is stupid. This is utterly stupid. The whole thing this woman is doing. And this is why black people are upset in that town. Once again, she's funny. She's a very funny person. She, she's a personality. I give her that. But is, is all that stealing worth it? All that finessing you're doing with the money, is it worth it? I mean, it's a matter of time, ladies and gentlemen, that this woman is going to be taken down. It's just a matter of time. You know, I, sure, I'd be surprised she make it to the end of the year. I'll be shocked. Because this, this woman here is doing too much. And the thing is, not only are you doing too much, you're just throwing in people's face, which make people even more upset. Then you got an attitude. When people tell you something, then you don't want the trustees telling you anything and you wrong, Tiffany. And then I still go back to Boulay Martin. Let me go back to Boulay Martin for a minute. Boulay Martin. Boulay Martin had this woman on his show. Do you know he also in a Boulay Martin interviewed that brother that was in the beginning of the video? Um, let me see if I can pull, pull, pull this brother back up. Where is he at? Let me go back to that, that brother, this right? Without the approval this brother right of the corporate here. authorities. So Boulay Martin interviewed this brother right here. Do you know Boulay Martin had most smoke for this brother right here on the screen who haven't stole a dime from Dalton trying to find out what's going on with Dalton. He got more smoke for that brother, but when Boulay had the super mayor in his face, he said he was, he was soft shooting. But what is that to expect from Boulay Martin? I mean, you know, we can't expect him to actually, cause you know, remember the super mayor is a Democrat, right? So is he really going to hold Democrats to the fire? No. See, even if you like Democrats, you don't let Democrats do other black people wrong. Even if you love a hardcore Democrat, for whatever reason you're a Democrat, do you? But yeah, Sydney. Oh, she going to jail. And when they take her to jail, they gonna make oh they gonna make that a public spectacle. They well you gonna be thinking they they caught Al Capone all over again. They gonna make a spectacle of her. Oh boy, they they trust me. They they, they gonna call the, the all the white media and say hey we gonna get her today. All y'all show up. Trust me, they're going to make a public spectacle of her. You better believe they're going to make a public spectacle. Well, we, well, Dorothy, the thing is, it's like you wrong, but then you lean into the wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like she, she not only doubles down, she triples down on her wrong. And, and the thing is, it came out that, you know why sister girl has so laid? And, it, and she has all this, you know, you could tell she a makeup artist is doing that stuff. Like, well, sister girl was, was, has, they say has spent over seven grand, um, on her hair and on her beauty things. So most people pay for their own. Oh no, not, not super mayor. 
No, the taxpayer paid for her hair to be laid. That's why that woman's hair is not out of place. I give her that. She, her hair is, is, is so out of, is so laid. I never see her hair not, not looking good. It's always looking good. Her makeup is always straight. Oh, cause the taxpayer paying it. Man, Tiffany living it up. And she's so cold, she gave herself a raise, $300,000. But if she, got, if she ever gets voted out, then the, the salary goes down to 25,000. So, so she paid for herself up, right? Do you know she makes more than what somebody in Congress makes a year? Even though we know Congress makes more because they, they corrupt and they do a lot of backroom dealings with the lobbyists. And this is why when you see a person going to Congress who's a bartender like AOC and all of a sudden now they're a millionaire, right? And see, I'm just not calling her out. I'm just mentioning her, but that's how it usually goes because they all corrupt. I mean, they all corrupt. It's not just a super mayor. The super mayor is just too, she's too, she's too out front with it. There we go. Cause all in power, listen, the majority of politicians are stealing. Why you think they, they, they stay in those jobs, even in Congress and they literally dying in those jobs. They so freaking corrupt because look all the money they getting all the money. Trust me. You talk about forensic auditors. If they would do forensic audits of every congressional member, Senate, mayor, you name it, all of them would be going to jail because all of them are taking money. Like are they talking about investigating uh, Eric Adams because he supposedly took some money allegedly from some Turkish people for a permit or whatever, right? How many, how many times has that happened? Well, if you just donate to my campaign, maybe I can get that permit for you. See, they don't let black politicians get away with certain things like that. But I, I know the white ones do it all the time. We know that, but we know the white ones got an immunity of law. They can get away with doing underhanded, undermining things. But when it's a black politician, you got to follow the letter of the law, but that's racism, white supremacy in this country. We have to follow the letter of the law. They can break the law because they have, uh, 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 uh you know, the, the social currency of whiteness, but you better believe they all are corrupt. It's just not the super mayor. The only difference, like once again, the only difference is that she's just being too upfront with it. That's the only difference with her. Look, Alana, I'm going to say something, Alana. Listen, Laura Lightfoot, if you see this, look. And I'm being nice when I say this, Laura Lightfoot. I want to help you, sister. I want to help you. That hairline isn't it. Lori, you got to make a decision, sister. Either, I know you want to keep your hair, so that's what I'm going to suggest. They got people when I, they got people in, you can either do it here in America or you can go to Turkey or whatever you like to go and they can give you your hairline back. They can give you your hairline back, Laurie. Like, trust me, it's an amazing thing. You don't have to have your hairline going back that far, Laurie. It, it, it's, it's not a good look. You know, listen, a receding hairline is a thing of the past. Now you can go and get your hairline back and it'll be straight. And you can, you could wear whatever hairstyle you want after that. But, but Lori fixed, Lori, you got to fix that. And Lori upgrade them suits, sister. Trust me, upgrade them suits. You know, them, them 1980s, 90s chopper suits got to go, Lori. I mean, Hey, look, look at the new stuff, you know, look at the, the men's fashion, you know, cause I know what you like to wear. Look at what the men's fashion is, you know, uh, uh get up to date, you know, cause they, them, them chopper suits got to go, sis. Get, get you some, get you some nice stuff. Trust me. It, it, it'll be good. I mean, some people, some people wearing more, I mean, you, modern fit. Well, for you, I wouldn't say slim fit. So modern fit at least, which is in like a in between right there. So maybe you can get some Tommy here figure or, um, shoot. What's, what's, the, what's that I got over here? Is it cap? Is that Calvin Klein or I can't remember. Oh, I got a suit jacket over here. Is that I actually got, look, Go, you want to save some money, uh, uh Laurie, go to Macy's and, and start buying stuff. Every time Macy's got some sales on like on suit jackets and then you can go up there and like, they got some night. Look, you can get some nice, uh, uh, you know, single breasted, you know, I know you like that double breasted stuff, right? You know, you can do that. Like, like, like Laurie, look, I want to help you as your brother to, to, to dress a little bit better. Get your suit game up. That's all. Get your suit game up. I'm not against you.
Yeah, yeah, get that, get that hairline restoration. It's okay. It's okay. Listen, thank God we got modern technology. We, we can get our hairline fixed. Listen, I seen on YouTube, they had this one, one sister from Somali, Somali sister. Her hairline was just like yours, Laurie. She went to Turkey. She got, she showed on YouTube and her hairline was just like yours. She went to Turkey. They got a hairline, her hair, full head of hair. She's so happy now. Like, that's it. Like, just, just take some time and go. That's all. Man, it's all good. It's all good. They even give you a free hotel room if you go do it in Turkey and you stay for the week. You, you good. I'm not calling her no, no, no character. I'm not doing that to her. No, you're supposed to help her, help her with her suit game, help her, help her get her hairline back. Hell, I mean, we're supposed to be helping out at Lori life with our sister. We don't supposed to be, don't be calling her no, no, no character like that. That, that is a, a black woman in our community that we got to help get her suit game up. Don't, 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 don't bully. Do not bully Lori Lightfoot. She don't deserve to be bullied. We are anti-bullying here. We want to help Lori Lightfoot. I don't know what kind of shoes she wear or whatever. I don't know, Lori, do you like, um, you know, do you like, like maybe loafers? Would you like tie-ups? You know, would you like Allen Edmonds? Uh, would you like Hugo Boss? You know, do you got some good Chelsea boots, Lori? You know, Chelsea boots is pretty good because you just slip them on, they look good. You know, you don't have to worry about tying them up. So Chelsea boots are pretty cool, Laurie. I don't know if you're wearing the Chelsea boots, but, um, you know, hey, it's a lot of good style out there, Laurie. You know, maybe you can get you an image consultant since you're about to get this bag from this investigation, you know? So when you bust, when you bust out uh, of the super mayor, you can look fly as hell. You can look fly. So please, Laurie, get you an image consultant. You know, Kevin Samuel's not here no more. You know, may he rest in peace. I'll tell you, call brother Kevin, but, but he ain't, he not here no more. Yo, you, oh, you say, you say, uh, uh, Lori Lightfoot is Cole Hans. Oh, no, 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 no. She, she got to step her game up, brother. She can't do the Cole Hans. Who, who, who wear Cole Han? No, no. Lori got to, got to, got to put to use that $400 an hour. You know? I mean, I mean, Lori can get you some, some, some nice earrings. At least get you some diamond, some good, nice diamond stud. You know, if you want to go, you know, traditional or, 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 or like the real traditional, some nice princess cut, you know, I know you like wearing your little earrings sometime with your, with your suits, you know, you, but you got to get them chopper suits, sis. It's 2024. We want to see you dress better. Yeah, that $400 an hour is going to help her get a new wardrobe, man. And, and, and people around her need to be helping her, man. Don't, don't, don't have her out here looking like that. Oh, Carla, Lori Lightfoot, not when, now you asked for too much. Carla, now, now you being mean. You know good and well, Lori Lightfoot is not going to wear no heels. Lori is dedicated to her suits, um, her uh, undershirts. She don't wear no ties, and that's fine. You ain't got to wear no ties. That's cool. Lori also, let me, let me help you out on something. So they got these, uh, you can go on Amazon, Lori, and... They, it's, it's these little, I forgot, it's called tie, uh, not tie clips, but ah, I forgot the name of it, but I got them. So basically with your shirts, instead of you having your, your collar flare out, you can go and get, and what happened, you stick it underneath there and the stick, it sticks to your shirt and it looks better than your, your collar flying, flaring out so much like the 1970s. Lori, get you some of them. That's, that's something good you can go get too. Then, um... I, I don't, I don't know about your fragrances and nothing like that, man. I don't know if you wear perfume, if you wear cologne, I don't know. But if you wear cologne, uh, blue, you know, uh, by Chanel, that's, that's one of my favorites, Laurie. Um, that was pretty good. Um, let me think you, you can't go wrong with uh, Eve St. Laurent. Can't go wrong either with that. I don't know if you wear cologne, now you wear perfume, then the new Burberry Goddess smell good if you wear perfume. I, I don't know what you wear. Hey, but, 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 but Crystal, it's okay for her suits to look masculine. That's okay. Because she wants to go with the masculine look. You know, because obviously she's the stud in the relationship with her wife. So she just needs to get step her game up. That's all. That's all. You say she's a Stetson woman. 
<laughs> oh my God, Stetson. I ain't heard of Stetson in so long. That That is so funny, guys. Is that so funny? You said that's too feminine? I, look, look, look. Uh, uh, look, look, look. We, we just, and look, let me explain something. Look, I, I had this conversation today with um, a sister, actually. Her dad is Nigerian, but her mom is black American, FBA, whatever you want to say. And she was saying because her name had a Nigerian name, she was getting roasted. And so I was talking to her about that. I say, when she said, I say, what do they call you? She said, African Blue Scratch. I said, guess what? My parents, American, I come from, my people were slaves in this land. I said, from the time they landed in Virginia and they were sold to plantations in Louisiana. And guess what? I was called growing up, I had told her, African booty scratcher. I said, in our culture, we roast each other. I said, and I understand across the pond, because I've been there, y'all really get offended by roasting. I say, but that's just what we do. I said, I've been called all kind of midnight. I've been called blackie. I've been called all kind of things, man, in my life. But hey, that's just roast battles. That's it. That's what we do. It's nothing serious. We'll roast each other. We talk about each other mama, each other daddy. If you ain't your daddy not there, we're going to talk about that. You know, we're going to talk about everything. So, so, so when you getting roasted, if your mama look a certain kind of way, you like, oh, I don't want my mama dropping me off to school. Mama, drop me off over here. Listen, listen, listen. I know I'm about to go set, go somewhere. If your mother was morbidly obese, the kids want you to drop them a, blo a block away. I'm going to tell you why. Because when you pull up, when it's time to get roasted, they roasting the hell out of that kid because of the mama. Now, I don't think I'm saying we need to take care of ourselves, but I'm telling you, it happened. It happens. Okay? And you either going to get mad, want to fight, or know how to roast, or whatever. But that's our culture. It's not, what kind of culture is that? It's not yours. So it's our culture. It's just that simple. So if your kid gets to a point that they don't want you to drop them off, find out why. Find out why. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, yeah, yes. Roast. Listen, bro. That's what we do. That's our culture. That's what we do. We roast. And if you're gonna be around Black Americans, those of you in the diaspora. If you can't take roasting, well, listen, just like we go to your country, we got to assimilate to your culture. We well, have to assimilate to ours. You black Americans are so mean. Listen, we got, we got to be tough like that because if we be soft, man, the white, the white supremacists have called us all kinds of names. I mean, vile, nasty names. So us roasting each other is basically toughen us, toughen us up for when we deal with the real problem. It's kind of like sparring. Like, you know, you're sparring with a box. You, you know, you're getting, you're getting your, your, your wind up. You know, you, you're, getting, you, you're getting becoming a better fighter. You know, all the sparring you're doing. So then when you have to get in the ring with the real white supremacist, you're not getting winded. You're not getting hurt so easy when you get punched. See, that's, that's how we have to do in our culture. We have to make sure we battle ready all the time. And roasting is just part of it. Because if I can take somebody talking bad about my person, my family or whatever, and then I don't get so emotional and then I know how to go back at them and find a flaw on them. Cause like if somebody roasts me, I can look at a person, I can roast you from head to toe because I can find flaws. It's not that hard to, if you know how to look for them, every human being got a flaw. But, but see, what y'all don't understand, uh, brothers and sisters from abroad, we have to stay battle ready. That's it. And that's one way we have always done it. It's just roasting. You know, sometimes we fight. It is what it is. A roast can get to the point we fight. We fight. You know, a lot of times we dap it up afterwards and we're good. It, it happens. 
How many times have y'all gotten fights in the neighborhood with people and like y'all best friends afterwards? It wasn't no, no, no beef. It wasn't no, I'm going to get a gun and I'm about to, well, none of that. They're like, man, y'all fist fought, whatever, man. Y'all best of friends now. Y'all daffing it up. So yeah. E work. You're lying. The truth not in you. Can't roast the master, man. They, they don't want me roasting them because I can roast them too. But most of them don't, I've never had to roast them because they never try to get in that battle with me. But I wish they would. Ooh, the knowledge I got today, ooh boy, I wish one of them would, but they don't do that to me. They treat me, I ain't gonna lie. They treat me nice. They don't come to me crazy. Karen doesn't come to me crazy. I'm not one to look for no fight with nobody. I'm a peaceful man. I want to be at peace with all people. But if you give it to me, then I have to give it back to you, right? So, no, nah, I don't really have problems with them like that. They, but, you know, I've heard people say, well, because you're a guy and, you know, you look like you got a look about you that people don't really, I'm like, well, I don't know about all that. But I said, if they're nice to me, I'm nice to them. If they don't mess with me, I don't mess with them. I get Whatever energy you give me, I give back. And it's just that simple. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the stream tonight. It was great to uh, chat with you once again, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you join us and download the African Diaspora News Channel app on the Google Play and Apple App Store. Very important uh, to do so. Let's get up to try to hit out 10,000. Trust me, 10,000 people that's on our stuff is like having a million subscribers on YouTube. Literally. I'm telling you, literally. It, it's like that. Okay, so that's why we want to get up to the 10,000 people, you know, on the app is is, is very very important. Uh, thank you to everybody that has downloaded the app, has joined memberships over there. You know, we almost 10% where we need to be, almost getting there, right? Um, but we greatly appreciate all the support. So thank y'all, and we will uh, come back uh, with another live stream. Lord bless, right? Uh, tomorrow, I don't know what we're talking about. 